I've had an interesting journey into advertising. I started in 1999. I was unemployed, walking on the street one day, and I came to a certain signboard, and the person standing underneath happened to be someone I knew. So I was like, what do these guys do? And it was a very nice name. It was called Eye Catchers. He said, they're a design agency. And I had no idea what a design agency was. All I'd done was scribbled on my books in high school, and that made me believe that I was, a, in some form, an artist. I went upstairs, I spoke to the receptionist, I said, can I speak to someone who runs this place and she's like what do you want it's like i want a job she took me to the md who he's a very nice guy he's one of my first mentors his name is mehul dave he sat me down and he said okay what do you want i was like i want a job i want to design i want to do these things i don't understand what your industry is but i want to do it he said okay there's a computer here's an ad it was a classified for travelers and he said this is your computer this is the ad i want you to make and yeah let me know when you're done. I went back to him two weeks later and showed him the ad because I had to learn Illustrator and I had to learn all that all by myself because he didn't have the time. He just gave me a computer. It took me two weeks to design a classified. I went back to him and I said, Mehul, I want you to see this. He's like, yeah, it's good. But the ad ran a week and a half ago. You were late. <laughs> so yeah, that was the beginning of me in advertising. And from Mombasa, I moved to Nairobi in 2001. I joined... Uh, Express Advertising, which became DDB. When I joined Express, we were a very small agency. And the first job I got was the World Cup promotion for Fujifilm. But yeah, that was for me was like, wow. And I thought I was doing a really big job, but in reality, they had a toolkit. You had to open the book, choose the image, put the image there, choose the camera, put the camera there, and your job was done. But to me, that was like, this is it. I've done a really amazing big job. I did six years there, John Quayle from Ogilvy. He was one of the big names at that time. So when JQ gives you a call, you answer. And in my mind, I was like, what does he want? Because I hadn't even thought that Ogilvy would poach me. So I got poached, I went to Ogilvy. First three months again was baptism by fire. Literally had no account to work on. And I think that was JQ's way of judging if the person fits or not. And I had to go look for briefs. And it was Eric Ndavi who actually gave me a brief for GSK. It was an open brief for what they wanted to do with headaches, Panadol and Leucozade. So I chose headaches and Panadol and I went and I came back with BTL ideas because that's what I was strong at. So he said, why don't we do some clever things with doors where when you open a door, it's two handles and you have to hold two Panadols to open the door and walk in. When we went to present it, the client was like, this is it. I love this. Can we start doing it? So it was a small, small thing, but as I did those, obviously being with Ogilvy and the way Ogilvy works, you get exposed to a lot of other clients and that kind of built the credentials around the ATL bit. My biggest client was U-Mobile, which I launched in Kenya at that time. I wasn't even a CD at that time. I was part of a team with JQ and other creatives. They would come up with an idea and I would execute it for them and we'd go and present it to the, the client who would come to our boardroom. It carried on for about four months. We couldn't crack an idea. The client was constantly being like, I don't like it, this doesn't work, this is old, this is new, but this is too, too lateral, this is too straightforward. And it caused a lot of frustration. After one meeting, I went to the MD at that time, who was Jill Kimami. I said, Jill, uh, I believe I can do this job. So I was like, no, just give me a chance. We have done so many, just give me one chance as well. And he's like, okay, fine, what do you need? I was like, I need a day off. He's like, I'll give you two days off. I was like, cool, these two days, I won't be in the office, I'll go and work. What else do you need? I was like, I need my copywriter. Who is it? I was like, it's Sam Kihanya. Sam Kihanya was my copywriter at that time. And the two of us cracked the idea uh, in two days. We had an idea, we had uh, layouts to go with it, we had a script to go with it, uh, we had radios, and we came back after two days. And we went straight to the boardroom because the client was already there. And this is the first time we ever stood up to present a, a big idea. And we presented it and the client was like, this is it, we're done. Only thing we did really was we said, okay, U-Mobile is coming into the market. What is it that they're gonna bring? They're gonna be a telecom. But when we looked at the briefs or we looked at the understanding of the client, it was more about, they wanted to simplify telecoms. And that's exactly what we presented. We said, U-Mobile, it's the simple things you do. And yeah, that resulted in like nine different campaigns actually, I'd say. U-Mobile meant from zero subscribers to 1.6 million subscribers in six months. I think that is what led towards, there's this guy here, let's package him off to Ghana and see what he does there. Ghana was very interesting. It was Jill, who, Jill Kimami, who was the MD at that time at Ogilvy. 
the two of us landed in Ghana on the same day and he was going to be the MD of Ogilvy Ghana and I was going to be the CD. We walked into our office and the studio was three people. We had like three rooms and that was the whole agency. We worked really hard. It, Within a year, we moved out of that place. We had a bigger office. Uh, within two years, we went from a three-people studio to almost a 12-people studio. I think going to Ghana, the key learnings for me was, number one, talent exists everywhere. You just have to look for it. So the challenge I had in Ghana at that time was I couldn't find copywriters. So I was like, okay, what do I do? As part of myself understanding the culture, I started talking to a lot of people and they have their own rap genre. I started following that pretty closely and I met two guys. One was, he used to rap in English and one guy used to rap in Chui, which was their local language. I was like, okay, these are my copywriters. So I approached both of them and I said, okay, you guys carry on with your rapping, but what would you, how would you think if I gave you a job as a copywriter in an agency? And I got them in. And the minute I got them in, what I started realizing was they had a very good understanding of the communities because they used to sing about their communities, they used to talk about the issues, and they started bringing that into the campaigns. And I was like, this is how I'm going to be doing things going forward. After Ghana I was with Ogilvy as well. So when I came back, I was taken by Ogilvy Africa. They said, come back. I did a year there, still handling Airtel. That's where I met Emeron and we, we worked as a team. We used to have these interactions every four or five times a day where we would just sit and talk about ideas. Oh, I'm, I have this. Why don't you build on it? Why don't you do this and why don't you do that? So that taught me about collaboration. And that led me to spending almost nine years with Ogilvy both in Kenya and in Ghana. Then I got a very interesting offer from VML YNR. It was only YNR at that time. Uh, then a few years later, they joined and became VML YNR. So I joined YNR uh, as a CD as well. I didn't have so many challenges as I had with Ghana or when I was at DDB where there were smaller teams. Over here, there was a team which was established. They were, they were actually a very good team. It kind of made work easier and allowed me to now concentrate more on learning new things. So that led to understanding digital a little better, doing some work for, for digital clients. We took a small brand, we ended up winning a cans with it. This was a brand which one of the art directors was like, Fawn, have you seen because I have a beard? So this guy was like, maybe you should start using this product. And I looked at it and I was like, wow, Mandevu, what do they do? And he's like, no, they make beard wax and they make beard wash and all these beard grooming products. I was like, wow, I used it once or twice and it was really good. And then I approached the lady who's behind it and I was like, do you, would you be interested if we did some work for you? She's like, yeah, but we don't have the kind of budget. So I was like, no, 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 it's okay. I believe in your product and I just want to do something for you. And she's like, okay, fine, go ahead, have fun. From then, the journey began. That year, we won a Grand Prix at the APAs, also for Mandevu. I think for me, I entered the advertising circle with a very big inferiority complex where I used to think I couldn't work with big people because obviously they would know more than me and I wouldn't know as much as them. There was a time where I had to deliberately shift myself into thinking like, okay, I believe that he knows more, but do I believe that he will always know more? I can gain all that knowledge, I can gain all that skill if I just work hard. By hard work, I don't mean just sit in front of a computer. Uh, hard work means trying to understand why people do certain things and then finding a different way of putting it forward. So yeah, that's my 20, 20 years in advertising summed up 